안녕하세요. 대전광학예술 비엔날레 2022년 미래도시 콜로키움 모더레이터를 맡은 대전시립미술관 학교연구사 비난나입니다. 네, 저희 콜로키움 굉장히 흥미로운 발표가 이어질 텐데요. 일부에서는 저희 비엔날레 참여 작가이신 알렉산더 엄슬리, 피에르 장지루, 노상희 작가께서 발표하시고 여섯 토론에서는 본 비엔날레 코디네이터이신 박하은, 권은지 코디네이터께서 함께 해주시겠습니다. 음, 먼저 영국 출신이시고 현재는 베를린에서 활동하고 계시는 알렉산더 웜슬리 작가께서 발표해 주시겠습니다. Yes, my name is Alexander Wormsley and um, as was just announced, I'm an artist and programmer um, from the UK based in Berlin, Germany. I'm honored to be presenting my work, The Tirana Time Capsules, uh, here at the Daejeon Biennial for Art and Sciences. And over the course of the presentation, uh, I hope to share some of my thoughts on the subject of this colloquium on virtual spaces and cities. Uh, through a few of my previous and current projects. My interest in cities, how they structure our lives and how they become invested with meaning, goes back to my studies in archaeology and anthropology, in disciplines that are deeply concerned with the material traces of human societies and how they are structured. And archaeology in particular is fascinating to me not only as a way of understanding the past, but also the role that the past plays in the present and into the future. And as the American novelist William Faulkner has written in one of his best known lines, the past is never dead, it's not even past. And in a similar way, I became interested in the virtual through its relation with the so-called physical. Uh, within our conception of the virtual exists also a conception of this physical. Uh, and one of the ways in which this can be seen most concretely is perhaps in the construction of virtual environments. Virtual worlds and environments today are built by a wide range of specialists for diverse purposes. They serve as the stages for play, for learning, for training simulation, uh, and also as documentary media. In many virtual environments are themselves, or at least claim to be, digital copies of real world locations. Think, for example, of Minecraft servers that reconstruct whole cities voxel block for voxel block or military simulations that allow soldiers to play out training scenarios as if they were at the actual location. What perhaps interests me more, however, are the ways in which the physical world is sampled, sensed, and recorded, and then subsequently reconstituted into a virtual environment, whether in the form of images, audio, 3D, or other kinds of data. The extent of this first became apparent to me with an early project in which I was asked as a research associate at the Hafen City University in Hamburg, Germany, to virtually recreate the nearby city of Stade in the year 1620 for a museum exhibit. This reconstructed virtual city took form over the course of a year and a half as I built in more and more data I had collected from the real world. The textures on the virtual buildings were drawn from photographs of current buildings I saw in Stade, the size and positioning of many buildings was determined from a 3D laser scanned model of the city taken from a police helicopter. The surrounding landscape was generated using satellite data. And from this, I began exploring virtual environments, not just as a way of reimagining worlds that no longer existed, but of reinterpreting worlds that were never intended to exist. That is to say, fictional worlds imagined as thought experiments or as models for future living. The work Alpine Architecture is a 360 degree film based on the work of the same name by the German architect Bruno Taut. Uh, Taut was active during the first half of the 20th century and created the original work, uh, a series of drawings on paper, as a response to the man-made destruction of the First World War. In reinterpreting the work for VR, I wanted at once to provide a new entry point into the original work, which is a beautiful and imaginative work in its own right, as well as draw a parallel between what Taut was trying to achieve and the way in which virtual environments function as a sandbox for ideas that cannot be enacted in the real world. So by untethering virtual environments from their physical world constraints, a space is created for experimentation that does not exist in the physical world. It seems nonetheless true, however, that virtual environments have found their most uh, important applications in cases where they do appear to simulate the physical world or at least create the illusion of being real. One of these cases I've become increasingly interested in more recently is the example of architectural visualizations, which tend to take the form of digital 3D renders of the future city and its residents. 
And this was the origin of a photographic series called Another Facade, which I began last year as I was in residency at the Tirana Art Lab in Tirana, Albania. And Tirana is a city that has undergone rapid urban development over the past 20 years, resulting in a large number of private commercial developments springing up across the city, turning the center into a permanent construction site. And one visual manifestation of this transformation is the presence of large format architectural visualizations printed on banners and hung from fences around construction sites. These serve the purpose of hiding construction while providing a pleasing illusion of the future benefits the structures will bring to the city. They are architectural capriccios shaped for the express purpose of capital investment. The photographic series is composed of a number of, among other things, detailed close-ups of characters in these digital images. They are the citizens of the future city, obtained for the most part from stock image databases and collaged together into the scene like mannequins in a shop window. I found, however, that the illusory quality of these images is somewhat broken when you isolate the characters and reframe the image. My aim here was to create new images that emphasize the surrealistic side of the visualizations by stripping away their context and leaving them floating somewhere between the real and the virtual. The project that is being presented here at the Daejeon Biennial also stems from my time in Tirana last year. Another result of the rapid development over the past 20 years or so has been the destruction of urban heritage and the restriction of public space to make way for new monuments and private developments. And this is a narrative that is certainly not unique to Tirana, but takes place in cities across the world as different conceptions of the city compete with one another for resources and recognition. However, in Tirana, a city that has been built and rebuilt at least four times in the past 100 years by successive fascist, communist, and neoliberal regimes, that debate seems particularly divisive. And it was questions of who should decide what is heritage, which heritage should be preserved, by whom and with what means that interested me and provided a line of inquiry for the work. My aim was not to provide answers to these questions, uh, that was in any case not my place, but to create a work that reflected on them. And at the same time, I have been interested for a while in the use of new documentary media such as photogrammetry and how it has become the foundation of the practice of what is called virtual preservation. This is the very notion that something can be preserved virtually. And it seems to imply, despite the ephemerality of digital media, that virtual objects are somehow more durable than the physical objects to which they refer. Photogrammetry itself is the, a method of generating 3D models from hundreds of photographs through the triangulation of points common to multiple overlapping photographs. Although it has origins as a cartographic technique in the 19th century, it has become particularly widespread over the past 15 to 20 years thanks to the availability of cheap digital cameras and high-performance computer software for the generation of 3D models. And as a result, it is nowadays used extensively in disciplines such as archaeology and architecture and has spawned an extensive infrastructure of university research departments, startups, and online model sharing platforms. The work Tirana Time Capsules aims to use this technique and combine it with audio field recordings taken from around the city to create a series of virtual environments that act as time capsules for three different environments, uh, three different neighborhoods, excuse me, each with a particular relationship to the narrative of urban heritage loss. Uh, the first of these environments uh, is based on the neighborhood uh, December 21, an area about two kilometers to the west of the city center, sandwiched between two main road axes. The area is characterized in particular by its numerous old villas, many of which were built in the first half of the 20th century and passed down through the descendants of a family. Although they occupy very prominent positions in the city, the high maintenance costs have meant that most have fallen into disrepair. The decision of what objects and sounds to record was based largely on personal exploration of each of these neighborhoods over the course of several weeks, guided by conversations with locals and with the curator Adela Demetia, who organized my stay in Tirana. The virtual scanned objects are also, however, a product of my engagement with the medium of photogrammetry. I often sought, sought out objects in the urban environment that could not be captured well using this method. The result is a number of fractured virtual objects that go some way to deconstructing the close link between the 3D scan and the reality it seeks to represent.
The second area is that of Combinat, a neighborhood just to the northwest of the city and a former industrial district during the communist period. During the transition to capitalism in the early 1990s, many of these former factory buildings were occupied by families and private individuals who walled off, part, who walled off parts of the floor as their own domestic quarters. And as can be seen behind me, uh, there is therefore this very interesting juxtaposition between crumbling industrial structures and reclaimed domestic spaces. This area is also in a move typical of the current neoliberal regime in Albania, earmarked for complete redevelopment as a new urban hub for design and technology startups called Combinat. And as I mentioned, the models are accompanied in the environments by audio field recordings made in each of the neighborhoods. These audio recordings play on loop in different parts of the environment, such as that as you explore the spaces, there is an ever-shifting montage between audio and visual. This was important to create a living environment, one that would constantly change and confront the audience member with new points of view and new visual and audio associations. The third and final neighborhood is an area of the Tirana Great Park called the Theater of Plants. It is an area where all the public heritage of Tirana and Albania more generally comes together. There are memorials to fallen soldiers, statues of famous writers and politicians, religious monuments, and public works of art. It is also an area that has been chipped away at its edges by large new commercial developments. In all three of these virtual environments, I sought to create a personal response to the loss of urban heritage, while at the same time avoiding the spirit of nostalgia that creeps into discourse surrounding heritage preservation. The essence, after all, of a time capsule is not one that tries to save something before it is lost, but one that rather accepts its loss and instead shifts the focus to sending objects into the future as mnemonics for telling future citizens about life in the past. And neither are the Tirana time capsules an attempt to create a new monument. Rather, they try to push the new documentary medium of photogrammetry beyond its function as a storage mechanism for spatial information towards a medium of active preservation and engagement with memory. As virtual environments are fundamentally created through a reconstitution and reassemblage of data from the physical world, they are becoming increasingly important sites where people engage with public memory. More like museums than archives, they are stages for active engagement rather than backrooms for data storage. Thank you very much for listening to this talk, and I hope you enjoy all this, uh, all the works in the Dejan Biennial. And I would personally like to thank the wonderful uh, curatorial and technical team um, that invited me here and uh, the opportunity to present the work in this context. <laughs> 네, 아, 발표 너무 감사드립니다. 어, 가사 환경이라는 것이 그 물리적인 세계를 기반으로 세계를 재구축하는 그 방식들을 포함하고 있다는 점 다시 생각해 보게 되었고요. 또 티라나 타임 캡슐 작업이 이제 무엇인가가 상실되기 전에 그걸 제, 어, 지켜내는데 의미가 있는 것이 아니고 그 미래 시민들에게 과거의 삶을 이야기하기 위한 일종의 어떤 기억으로 그 대상을 미래로 보내는데 초점을 두려워 했다는 설명이 굉장히 인상적이었던 것 같습니다. 그 엄슬리 작가분의 VR 작업은 강당 맞은편에 그 오전 시실에서 관람하실 수 있습니다. So, although I am very happy to be an honor to be invited to the day May, and I would like to thank you for the invitation. I am Pierre Jean Gilou, and I am exhibiting here the video tetralogy entitled Invisible Cities. To define my artistic practice, I would say that it's composed of two binomials space volume and image sound. One could say that the common denominator of my video work is the cohabitation of reality and fiction. Even if my films are of, of a different nature, I have always liked to bring opposite together and work in an intermediate space with the aim of making reality weather or showing it from a different angle. My videos are the result of association on hybridization. I use digital techniques and I develop a work of collage on editing that often includes animated sequences in 2 or 3D. The graphic interventions on my images allow me to mix virtual worlds that modify the perceptions of reality. The challenge is to make the virtual and the real cohabit to establish a dialogue to put them face to face, to mix them, to question them. 
The exhibition and projection of my film takes the form of immersive installations where the viewer is invited to wander inside a multi-screen devices. The notion of in situ, the notion of in situ is important because the exhibition space will influence the way the work is arranged and perceived. The special arrangement is a quasi-sculptural exercise in which the viewer makes his own way. Images and sound punctuate, inhabit and redesign the space. The film can be viewed individually, but the force of them can also be seen as an arrangement that forms a wall. The concept of a whole and parts is relevant here. The four projections, which have different durations, run, run in a loop. I have chosen not to synchronize the projections. The images of the four films visible together at a given moment are never identical according to the cycle operated during the day. There is a, a sort of phase shift, a term I have borrowed from Steve Reich. The images in these different films cross and meet them with each other and offer us each time a new narration. The association of images gives the viewer the freedom to create a compo and compose his own story. I never impose an univocal meaning. The place is left to the interpretation while could even say to his own reverie. I have always been interested in urban forms and their evolution. Cities have been the theater of narrative fictions. Um, in this case, Invisible Cities draws the portrait of several Japanese cities and revisits the last modern utopia, the metabolism movement. Invisible Cities is a prospective fiction that takes filmed and photographed urban and social rea realities at its starting point. They are extended by computer-generated images, which allows me to see it my to situate my artistic practice close to augmented reality. Invisible Cities was made between 2015 and 2017 during my residencies at Kogan Echo Bazaar in Yokohama, as well as at Villa Kojoyama in Kyoto. The starting point, it was the discovery of Arata Isozaki's work entitled Ruined Hiroshima. I had projected images on mega structures onto a wall photograph of the red city. This image is an enigma. In this devastated landscape, two large architectural forms stain out, two mega structures overhand this destroyed city. Once upon a time, while researching, I discovered the metabolist group. In 1960, they brought together urban planners, architects, and artists. The project was the, to rebuild the country, to give a new identity. They created a radical solution to organize the rapid but uncontrolled growth of Tokyo after, war, after the war. It was a drive towards the future, a new development of urban space that would respond to the flow of people to the cities. The manifesto Metabolism 1960, the proposal for the new urbanism, opened a very fertile decade. This movement reached its peaks during the uh, Universal Exhibition of Osaka in 1970 under the main theme of progress and harmony of mankind, reflecting the belief that technology would be the source of progress. Metabolism was the last modernist utopia of the, the last century. This discovery gave me the desire to release this project. Uh, the, invisible, the Invisible Cities project, or a potential universe. These four films aim to take us on a journey backwards through the urban history of Japan, showing the sensitive form of the metabolist movement utopia through travelings on virtual reconstructions. It is also an uh, urban archaeology that underlines the changes that this country is currently undergoing. Augustin Berg sentence, the fed out of urban metamorphosis sums up my point perfectly. 
Metabolism, the first film, is not a documentary, but rather a work of fiction that introduces into the present in Tokyo elements of the past that have only been sketched out or never constructed. I have chosen two specific projects, one from Kisho Kurakawa, Elix City, from 1961, and one from Arata Isozaki's Cluster in the Air, Shibuya, from 1960-62. Both, both projects were modeled in 3D and integrated in Tokyo. These historical milestones are, are part of the urban strata of the Japanese megalopolis like ghostly presences invented in a societal project in the former century, but visible in the following century. They are like fragments of the past imported in our present. What is disturbing is the metabolist construction in Tokyo. Some real traces of this utopia still bear witness to, the, to this past. The film are made of temporalities such as the present, the traces of the past in the present and this virtuality that invites itself into the present and creates a link, a potential universe. The idea of mixing historical layers with contemporary Tokyo seemed to be an interesting idea to develop in order to create an anachronism, to reveal this utopia and consequently to question her presence. It was the challenge of the project. The French philosopher Elie During, describing the film Metabolism, says about it, and I quote, Far away, between two blocks of houses, we see the familiar profile of the cluster in the air, imagined by Isosaki, and of which we only know sketches, preparatory plans of models, or models. This furtive appearance evokes a feeling of déjà vu, but this paramnesic confusion dissipates quickly. As the vision is confirmed, through different in the hand, it, be it becomes a familiar element of the setting. A memory image integrated or rather slipped into the fa urban fabric. For the realization, the scootings were made in the district respecting the geography that the authors had assigned to the project, Tokyo, Tokyo Bay for Kurokawa and Shibuya for Isosaki. My first task was to find places where the, these architectures could be virtually implanted. Then I filmed and photographed these different spaces, imagining what Tokyo could have been. I also discovered in metabolic thinking that it integrates different periods, past time, present time, and time in the future in one architectural space. There is no linear continuity of time. The images of time were intertweet like rhythms. This matched the conception of the Invisible Cities project, which is based on temporal wavings. Reminiscences, intrusion from the metabolic avant-garde into the present to the, tem or to the temple of Nara. A kind of symbiosis, as Kurokawa might have said. Future. Alan Curtis said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. This is what the metabolist did in 1970 in Osaka. At the first world exhibition in Asia, this event helped shape Japan image as a technological nation, and it was its golden age. In the film station, we discover a partial reconstruction of this exhibition. This virtual recreation reveals sculpture on architectures, works of science fiction works that contribute to write in the collective memory the belief in a new world. I quote Elie During about retro futures. It is not necessary, it is necessary to make something of them, to reinsert them into a creative movement in order to prevent the potential for displacement. The imagination must welcome them, not as relics or touching images testy thing for an utopian elan, but as an invitation to recycle 
their motif in a climate of nostalgic entertainment, but as real vectors of formal inventions. To make any change, Utopia's fiction must be present. They precede action, and there is no action without representation. There is no action without Utopia or fiction. Omnipresent, the liquid element opens and closes the film. Unlike the three others, which are excessively ur urban, station leaves one more room for nature. To close invisib invisibility cities and open up a future to be developed, I have decided to create, with the help of my friend and arch architect Manuel Tarditz, a virtual lake city, the Biwakomachi on Lake Biwa. I have chosen that place as a symbolic place the Lake Biwe is the biggest natural water reserve and geographically close to the place where the Kyoto Protocol was signed in 1997. We construct this floating city like a prototype who can be energy self-sufficient using solar, wind and hydraulic energy. This echoes the objectives of the protocol. This city, composed of housing models, were designed with reinvention of local specificities and inspired by the Villa Katsura, 17th century imperial villa. These forms were born by mixing ancestral knowledge and new ways of conceiving architecture. The latest research I have triggered the project I am currently working on, which is called Biomimetics. This project was born in India, and I'm still developing it. It is a question about the scarcity of water in arid zones and its corollary global warming. I collaborate with researchers in biomimetics to try to sketch out solutions such as dual recovery and bioluminescence. This very real scenario is our future which I put in my sights. Art can be a way of talking about this future and in de-dramatized but nevertheless lucid way. What will happen when this future also becomes a new once called future? <laughs> Um, 다음으로는 이제 저희 한국 작가이신 누상희 작가의 발표가 있겠습니다. 잠시 자리 이동 있겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 누상희 작가입니다. 이번 콜로키움에서 여러분들과 의견 고안을 가지는 시간을 가지게 되어 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다. 제가 이번 시간에 이야기하고자 하는 것은 2016년부터 시작된 제 개인적인 경험에서 비롯한 작업에서 2022년까지 여러 도시에서 머물며 겪은 경험으로 파생된 작업의 이야기를 하고자 합니다. 저는 아마 2016년부터 시기부터 주변을 관찰하면서 작업의 소재를 얻고 저를 포함한 제 주변에서 벌어진 현상에서 작업의 이야기를 찾는 형태를 취하게 되었습니다. 이와 맞물려 여러 도시에서 짧게나마 거주하게 되고 겪게 되는 경험에서 작업을 풀어가는 형태를 취하고 있습니다. 2016년 저는 우울증을 겪고 있었습니다. 그것은 작업과 관련된 것도 있었고 개인적인 생활에서 오는 이유도 있었습니다. 이로 인해서 심리 상담을 받게 되었고 거기서 상담사 분과의 이야기를 통해서 스트레스라는 것이 사람의 신체에 여러 가지 영향을 주는 것을 알게 되었습니다. 이 소주제를 가지고 작업을 해보려는 계지, 계기를 가지게 되었고 때마침 예술과 과학의 융복합 레지던시에서 이 실험을 할수 있는 기회를 가지게 되었습니다. 6개월의 레지던시 기간 동안 한국표준과학연구원에서 머물며 여러 가지 실험을 진행했습니다. 주된 목적은 일정 기간 반복된 특정 행위가 사람에게 얼마만큼의 스트레스를 유발하는지에 대한 실험이었습니다. 이 시기에 스트레스 측정 방법인 ECG 방식으로 데이터를 수집하였습니다. 
나중에 이러한 방식은 다른 작업을 진행하면서도 활용하였습니다. 스트레스에 관한 실험이 끝난 실험적인 작업이 끝난 뒤에 저는 다시금 다음 작업에 관한 고민을 하기 시작했습니다. 저는 그전 작업에서 연관되어 파생되어지는 소재에 대한 고민을 하기 시작했습니다. 그러면서 제가 관심을 가지게 된 사회 현상은 미세먼지에 대한 것이었습니다. 2017년 시기에 한국에서는 미세먼지에 관한 이슈가 사람들 인식에 자리 잡기 시작한 시점이었습니다. 이 시기에 주변을 산책하다가 뿌연 하늘과 풍경을 바라보게 되었고 한국에서는 외출 시에 마스크를 권장하는 뉴스가 나오기 시작했습니다. 저는 작은 흥미와 함께 개인적으로 미세먼지 데이터를 수집할 수 있는 방법이 있는지에 대한 고민을 하기 시작했습니다. 인터넷에 공개된 레퍼런스로 휴대용 거치가 가능한 미세먼지 측정 센서를 제작했고 다시금 1년의 레이던시 프로그램에 차, 참여하면서 혼자만의 실험을 해보기로 했습니다. 제가 했던 작업의 행위는 일상의 풍경을 영상으로 반복적으로 기록하는 것과 함께 매일매일의 미세먼지 데이터를 수집하는 것이었습니다. 최종적인 작업의 형태는 영상 기록물을 파노라마 형식으로 설치하는 것과 그동안 수집했던 미세먼지 데이터를 이진법 형태로 드로잉하는 것이었습니다. 이 시기 제가 하는 모든 작업의 아카이브에서 간단한 프로그래밍 그리고 데이터 수집의 형태는 컴퓨터 장치에 의존하고 있었고 이 아카이브에 대한 결과를 표현하기에 이진법의 형태로 이루어진 드로잉이 매우 적절하다고 생각되어져서입니다. 그리고 그전 스트레스 작업의 마무리 기간 동안 유의미했던 대화를 나눴던 한국표준과학연구원에서 세포를 연구하신 김세아 박사님과의 대화를 통해서 나왔던 외부 자극에 의해서 영향을 받는 세포의 형태 움직임에 관한 표현을 작게나마 표현해보자 했습니다. 김세아 박사의 의견은 여러 가지 형태의 스트레스, 외부 자극에 따라 세포의 움직임은 유동적으로 반응한다 것과 이것은 사람의 기분, 건강, 질병 등으로 영향을 미친다는 것이었습니다. 저는 그래서 이 시기에 특정 세포의 형태를 작업으로 옮겨오는 과정을 거치게 되었습니다. 결국 우리가 일상생활에서 하는 모든 행위는 시체, 신체 내부의 미시세계에서 영향을 미치게 되고 그러한 결과로 우리가 인지하는 거시세계에도 영향을 미치게 되는 상호 연결성에 주목했습니다. 저는 미세먼지에 관한 작업 이후에 여성의 불안이라는 주제를 가지고 작업을 시작했습니다. 이전 작업이 끝나면서 레지던시에 머물던 헝가리 여성 작가의 작은 대화가 시작이었는데 이후 그 장소의 몇몇 분의 여성분과의 대화에서 불안감이라는 형태의 관심을 가지게 되었습니다. 어떤 목적을 가지기보단 이전에 제가 가졌던 불안감, 우울증의 감정과 기시감에서 비롯된 것일 수도 있겠습니다. 이후 우연히도 프랑스 아비뇽에서 레지던시를 참여할 수 있게 되었고 여러 나라의 여성분들을 대상으로 인터뷰와 ECG 스트레스 측정 방식을 같이 도입하였습니다. 결과물로는 여성의 인터뷰 영상과 스트레스 측정 데이터를 가지고 랜덤 드로잉이 모래에 뿌려지는 형태의 작업을 선보였습니다. 음. 이와 함께 프랑스 아비뇽에 머물면서 한국의 환경 문제와 예전 작업이었던 미세먼지 작업에 대한 이야기를 현지에서 나눌 기회가 있었습니다. 한국의 미세먼지와는 또 다른 지역적인 특성이 내재된 미스랄 바람에 대한 것에 대해 배울 수가 있었습니다. 아비뇽 지역은 오래전 로마 군대에게 정복당한 역사를 가지고 있었는데 그 정복의 역사가 길지 않았던 이유 중에 하나가 현지 토착민과는 다르게 로마인들은 현지에서 발생하는 미스랄 모래바람의 환경에서 적응하지 못했다는 것에 대해서였습니다. 같은 환경이지만 토착민과 침략민들의 환경을 대하는 시점과 경험의 차이의 차이들이 저에게 인상적으로 다가왔습니다. 저는 이 역사의 한 부분과 현지에서 잠시나마 간접 경험했던 미스랄 바람에 대한 경험을 하면서 한국에서 시도했던 미세먼지의 데이터 수집과 아비뇽 지역이 간직한 역사의 한 부분을 이진법 드로잉으로 옮겨오는 시도를 하게 되었습니다. 이것은 현지 프랑스 메이저의 제안이기도 했습니다. 그러면서 아비뇽 도시를 가로지는 강의 이미지와 함께 여러 실험적인 작업들을 현지에서 시도하였습니다. 한편으로 기존에 제가 머물던 도시가 아닌 짧게나마 제가 머물던 다른 도시의 역사와 이미지를 옮겨오는 시도이기도 했습니다. 그리고 저는 2019년 11월에 3주의 기간 동안 단기 레지던시 프로그램에 참여를 하게 되었습니다. 현지에서 머물면서 어떠한 작업을 진행할지를 고민하던 중에 현지인에게 리오, 대자, 리오 도시라는 곳의 지역 문제와 치안 등에 대해서 들을 수 있는 시간이 있었습니다. 도시 안의 빈민 지역인 파벨라에는 매일매일 위험의 무방비로 노출된 아이들이 있었고 제가 방문했던 해에는 도시의 시장이 마약 카르텔에게 살인교사를 당한 일도 발생했음을 알수 있었습니다. 
그리고 저 역시 도시에서 머물면서 일행과 함께 강도를 당하는 경험을 하기도 했습니다. 작은 사고였지만 후에 이야기를 전달받은 것은 그 자체가 매우 위험한 상황이었다고 전해들었습니다. 그리고 미술관 주변에서 설치를 하는 기간 동안 오후 6시 기점으로 주변 상점들이 하나같이 문을 닫는 모습과 도시를 걸어다닌 사람들이 밤에는 거의 보이지 않는 모습이 제게는 인상적으로 다가왔습니다. 이것은 제가 기존 한국에서 경험했던 것과는 매우 이색적인 모습이기도 했습니다. 그리고 도시 안에서 매일매일 평... 매일 평균 7명이 살인으로 목숨을 잃는다는 것에 대해서 들었을 때 저는 이 상황에 대한 의미를 함축할 수 있는 짧은 단어를 이진법 표, 이진법으로 표현한 드로잉이 현지에서 진행할 작업에 적절하다는 생각이 들었습니다. 그리고 겉으로 드러나는 도시의 아름다운 풍경과 바다에 대한 작업을 동시에 배치하는 작업을 진행했습니다. 저는 2019년 12월 브라질에서 작업을 마무리한 뒤에 몇 가지 예약된 국내의 전시들을 국상하기 위해서 프랑스 지인이 있는 메츠라는 도시를 방문하게 되었습니다. 도시에서의 짧은 거주 시간은 제게 많은 영감을 주었고 내년을 기약한 채 한국으로 귀국을 하였습니다. 그러나 2020, 20, 2020년이 되면서 전 세계는 팬데믹 현상에 놓이게 되었고 기획했던 전시 일정은 모두가 취소가 되었으며 저 또한 거의 전시를 위한 작업을 진행할 수가 없었습니다. 저는 생계를 위한 생활을 해야 했고 그렇게 2020년을 보내게 되면서 저는 어쩌면 앞으로 작업을 진행하지 못할 수도 있겠다는 생각, 생각과 과연 한다고 해도 과거의 작업 형태를 유지한 채 작업을 이어나가는 것이 유의미한 것인가에 대한 고민을 하기 시작했습니다. 그러면서 우연히도 2021년 초에 기획전에 참여할 수 있는 기회가 생기게 되었고 저는 이러한 상황에서 어떤 작업을 해야 하나를 고민했습니다. 저는 여러 가지를 생각했습니다. 제가 사는 도시 대전도 변했고 제가 머물렀던 도시들도 지인들의 이야기를 통해서 무언가 변했음을 듣게 되었습니다. 아마도 이 현상이 회복된 뒤에도 도시는 이전 과거로는 돌아가지 못할 것이고 무언가가 변한 것일, 변할 것이지 않을까 하는 상념이 머릿속에 남게 되었습니다. 저는 그래서 인간 사회를 구성하는 기본 토대에 대해서 다시금 고민해보기 시작했습니다. 물을 마시는 것, 땅 위를 걷는 것, 공기, 도시와 대지를 비추는 빛, 어디선가 부르고는 바람, 그리고 거기에 수반하는 그림자, 이러한 기본적인 것을 관찰하기 시작하였습니다. 이전과는 다른 방향 혹은 다음 단계로 나아갈 수 있다고 생각을 하였고 그런 것을 위한 작업을 진행하기로 하였습니다. 그것은 아주 소박하게 이러한 것들을 재구축하는 작업들을 시작해보고자 했습니다. 뭔가 제가 느끼고 경험한 팬데믹 상황은 그러한 세계로 보여지기도 했, 했기 때문일지도 모르겠습니다. 그러한 지점에서 저는 빛을 활용하여 기본적인 구성위의 그림자를 구성하는 작업과 모래를 활용하여 기본적인 어딘가를 걷는 것에 대한 고민을 담아본 작업을 시작하였습니다. 이전에는 시도해보지 않았던 작업이었고 최소한의 의도는 작업의 형태가 간결하고 담백한 형태였으면 하는 생각이었습니다. 기본으로 돌아가거나 기본으로 바라보는 것, 그러한 것에 주목했습니다. 이후에도 전시 기회가 있을 때마다 기본적으로 생각한 테마에 대해서 작은 해석을 시도하, 시도하였습니다. 2022년 물에 대한 작업을 진행해 보았고 이번 비엔날레에서는 빛이라는 매개체에 다시금 생각해 보는 작업을 시도하였습니다. 이러한 모든 기본 요소는 도시 안에 언제나 있고 어디에든 있는 그런 것입니다. 몇 년의 기간 동안 여러 도시를 방문하여 만났던 친절한 사람들, 도시마다 다른 역사와 도시의 상황, 그리고 각기 다른 경험들이 저자, 저의 작업에 영향을 미쳤다고 생각합니다. 앞으로도 저는 이곳 대전이라는 도시에 머물 수도 어쩌면 다시금 우연한 기회로 다른 도시를 방문할지도 모르겠습니다. 어쩌면 그러길 희망합니다. 계속해서 도시가 변해가는 모습, 그 공간에 머무는 시간에서 저의 작업도 변해가길 바라보고 그 도시의 모습 또한 긍정적인 모습으로 변해가길 바라 보면서 이번 발표를 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 노상희 작가님 발표 감사합니다. 어, 여러 도시에서의 어떤 새로운 경험들이 작가님의 작업을 이어가시는데 중요한 기회가 되어온 것 같습니다. 어, 현재 대흥동에 위치한 대전 창작센터에서 전시되고 있는 노상희 작가의 까르마 작업은 그 전시장을 가득 채운 섬유 라인들로 수많은 요소들이 연결된 도시의 모습을 표현하고 있습니다. 네, 저희 세 분의 발표자의 발표를 대하면서 도시가 과거, 현재, 미래, 또 인간의 삶이 뒤얽혀서 계속해서 진화하고 있는 역동적인 공간이라는 사실을 다시금 생각할 수 있는 시간이었습니다. 그럼 이번 
일부 토론 시작하겠습니다. 일부 토론은 저희 박하은 권은지 코디네이터께서 함께 해주시겠습니다. 네, 일부 알렉산더 엄슬리, 피엘 장지루, 노상희 작가님 발표 중에 이제 더 함께 얘기하고 싶었던 지점들 또그외 부분들 자유롭게 토론해 주시면 좋겠습니다. 작가분들께서도 자유롭게 참여해 주시면 좋겠습니다. 네, 그 이후에는 관람석에서 이제 질의응답을 이어가도록 하겠습니다. 네. 아, 네. 사실 저는 알렉산더 엄슬리 씨 발표를 들으면서 떠올랐던 질문이 한 가지 있습니다. 네, 일단 아나더 파사드 같은 작업을 통해서 존재하지 않는 도시를 상상하고 재해석하고 시뮬레이션하는 작업을 지속해 오셨는데요. 그래서 가상 환경에서 도시를 이미지화하고 그리고 도시를 상상하는 작업에 초점을 맞춰서 당신이 상상하는 미래 도시란 어떤 모습을 취하는지 그 속에서 거주자는 어떤 사람들이 될 것인지 구체적으로 설명을 듣고 싶습니다. Is that on? Oh, yeah. Um, th thank you for the question. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think cities clearly uh, exist not only in a physical space, but more and more also on a in a virtual space. They have this virtual layer that we all inhabit simultaneously with the physical layer. And there are a lot of... Uh, interesting angles to explore this virtual space from and what it means for the future. I think one of, uh, one of the most important questions to be addressed going forward is the uh, ethical questions fundamentally. A lot has been said, for example, about how the virtual space has been monopolized um, by a number of, uh, a, a very small number of very large companies, for example. And in the work that, um, that you mentioned with the, the Another Facade, the photographic series, um, in that case, um, it's looking at the visions of the future being put forward by large property developers in Tirana. And I think what's, uh, interest, what was interesting for me in these images um, is to examine this, this vision of the future because it is one in which uh, the virtual world is being used Uh, is being used to capitalize on something in the physical world, as it were. And I think that's one of the uh, one of the dangers, perhaps, that will have to be looked out for is the use of virtual worlds as a, a platform for um, capitalization of monetization, because the images that are created in the virtual world are very seductive, a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and. Um, Uh, and to that extent, they can also be very misleading, and that was sort of the uh, one of my interests in this series, another facade. Thank you. Oh, 좋은 답변 감사드리고요. 네 그리고 메타버스가 가상 세계라는 점에서 이 세계와 평행하게 가고 있다는 인상을 주곤 하는데 사실 인텔에서도 그렇고 메타버스는 자본 위에 건설된 새로운 도시다 이렇게 얘기를 많이 하고 있잖아요. 그런 자본주의 논리에 대한 비판이 많이 생각나는 답변이었던 것 같습니다. 네, 또 다른 질문 또 있으신 분 보내주시면 좋겠습니다. 어, 저 같은 경우에는 피에르 장지루 작가님께 질문이 있는데요. 20세기 유럽 건축 역시도 새로운 도시 혹은 새로운 시대를 지향하며 많은 변화가 있었습니다. 그 중에서도 메타볼리즘을 선택한 이유에 대해서 듣고 싶습니다. Yes, yes. In fact, the, the, the architecture involved in Europe during this period, in France, for example, under the influence of Claude Parent and Paul Virilio. The, historical, um, the historian Michel Ragon talks about these different trends in his book, History of Modern Architecture and Urbanism. The coherence found in metabolism is quite unique. It's an entity which brings together artists, urban planners and architects, and it's very rare. It's a global movement which is more philosophy, which main differences are the special conceptions, totally different from those imagined in Europe, which okay. leads to singular conceptual and formal proposals. The heritage left by metabolism is real because contemporary architects, architects come from it. I can give you an example. Kyonori Kikutaki, who was metabolist, taught Toyo Ito, who himself taught Katsuya Sejima and Rie Nishizawa, sorry for the name, the Sana group, 
who themselves continued. One could speak about the filiation. filiation. 어, 저는 단순히 건축 양식 혹은 그거에 지나지 않을 거라고 생각을 했는데 그거에 연이어서 도시까지 이어진다는 점에서 네, 많은 네, 인상 깊었던 것 같습니다. 관객에서도 혹시 관객분 중에서도 혹시 그 질문 있으신 분 자유롭게 해주시면 좋겠고요. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you for curators and artists for this uh, wonderful exhibition, which I haven't seen yet, but a uh, wonderful symposium. And I do want to ask uh, some yeah, artist have... questions. Uh, so one is a question to Pierre Jean, right? Um, very interesting project. And I was a bit um, puzzled by two things. One is why you refer to metabolism as the last kind of modern, right, utopian movement, because we're talking about 1960s, early 1960s. So obviously there has been many movements since then. For example, high-tech architecture, right, you know, like Le Corbusier Center, or worldwide web in the 90s, which is obviously, I think, another modern utopian uh, development. And also, uh, I mean, I love your work, but I also wasn't sure why you didn't mention you know, that uh, Invisible Cities, right, is the title of a famous book by Talo Calvino, because maybe you assume that everybody knows it, but I don't think most people here know that. <laughs> so you think that it's not, you don't need to mention it because everybody knows it, or it's not irrelevant? Okay, I uh, will start with the, <clears throat> the title. Um, yes, I know, of course, uh, Italo Calvino, and I read it before. Um, no, it's no, it's not the same kind of. Um, I don't want to make any illustration about his uh, his, his book, and uh, it's very different story. Uh, in fact, um, I give this name because um, uh, when I arrive in Narita, and uh, it was by night from France, mm. and uh, I took the train to Narita to Tokyo Station. And uh, on the travel, traveling, uh, you can see in the, um, in the space uh, different lights um, from, the, from the buildings. And in Japan, the lights are uh, outside, you know, for the stairs. And you can see a lot of uh, lights, very regular lights, like uh, geometrical lights. And it forms something like a braille. Uh, writing, you know, for the blind people, and uh, I saw that I saw this landscape by night and just punctuation in a space, and the, remember it's it's give me the idea to um, to give this this uh, this title invisible because you don't see anything, just lights. So there is no material. It's um, mm. it's um, it's no architecture, but just lights. And and it's some, somebody like me who couldn't see anything, like uh, blind persons. And the, the second reason is something like, um, in fact, um, for the models, for the metabolist models, when you imagine that. Uh, Tokyo could be. Um, it's something like you have to um, to project on your brain some places, uh, and for me it was an invisible city because, of course, it doesn't exist. But if you want in your brain with the with the knowledge you have from this, you can really imagine that. Um, Tokyo could be been in the, um, before and now, you know, uh, when I was uh, walking in Tokyo, I can imagine Arata Isozaki, ah, yes, it could be there, and, and uh, it can change the, the face of this city, you know? It's okay? Is the response? It, it's more than okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, and w one, more, one more question to Alexander, if I may. Um, so also thank you so much for your very rich presentation. And I was wondering if you can maybe say a bit more about, uh, you know, what, what you see is a 
relationships between your real, right, um, Tiran, as you saw it, with all these different historical layers, and this idea of digital preservation. Uh, and just to add a bit context to my question, you know, so I've been working, right, in digital art, digital media for 30, 36 years, <laughs> and there is nothing which ages faster than digital. Right? So 100 years from now, most cities are going to look like Dezen. You know, kind of boring, small businesses, you know, nothing exceptional, uh, maybe some flying taxis, but basically kind of fucked up. And uh, medieval cathedrals will remain, but none of the digital work which we're doing today, nobody wants to look at it five, year, five years from now because it will look dated, low resolution, uh, and I know that, right, from 90s and 2000. Uh, but yet, as you say, people uh, want to put money and energy into this digital preservation. Um, so maybe you have some comments on, on this. Maybe you can riff, riff off what some references I made. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, it's, uh, it was definitely, um, it is definitely a real interest of mine, this concept of virtual, presenta uh, virtual preservation. Um, as you mentioned, uh, digital media are extremely ephemeral, they're extremely difficult to preserve, um, and also uh, they age very quickly, both, both aesthetically and technologically. Um, and so the whole concept of the work, I mean, not the whole concept, but there was something uh, I was trying to get at that was a little bit more ironic about the idea of virtual preservation. You know, the idea that something can be preserved virtually or digitally um, is, is, seems to me slightly um, oxymoronic in the sense that, you know, the, the virtual copy is going, to, uh, is going to be lost much sooner than the physical copy probably will be. Um, and so, in a way, I was is interested in that um, aspect and also interested how to um, perhaps uh, prevent this sort of fossilization that occurs when, you, uh, when one uses um, something like photogrammetry or any documentary media, photo photography included, um, how to avoid this sort of fossilization that occurs, this fossilization of a state of decay, essentially. Photography, for example, I think is is a medium that is uh, um, where this is this is very prevalent. This sort of uh, fossilization effect, or, or whatever you'd want to call it, there's a there's a there's a lot of melancholy involved in photographing something that's no longer there. And I think that uh, we're saying with photogrammetry is is something that is very similarly linked. It's it's also a lens based medium and also something that. Um, that seeks to pre preserve a certain state of something. And then perhaps what I was trying to play with in, in this work is uh, in order to try and overcome that or try and play with that a little bit is to um, allow people to continually engage with, it in, engage with these models in a virtual environment that allows their continued survival through continued interaction in a way. Um, it's almost maybe a, a trick to allow people to to overcome the sense of melancholy maybe that comes with that, um, with this fossilization process. Yeah, 동시에 지금 살고 있는 살고 있고 앞으로 저희들이 가상과 현실 두 개의 세계 속에서 살아가는 게그 현실이 될 것입니다. 그래서 그 앞으로 더 중요해지는 것이 그 디지털 트랜스포메이션과 메타버스 아두 가지가 될 것입니다. 어 제가 궁금한 것은 어 작가님께서 작가님이 구상하고 있는 그 부분을 메타버스에서도 어, 구현하실 생각 그리고 어떤 형식으로 구현하실 생각이 있는지 궁금합니다. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think it's uh, um, the it's 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 difficult to answer in one way because I think the term metaverse is is so broad. I can maybe what I would understand by metaverse. Um, I guess I understand it very broadly. So something that is perhaps much more than what Facebook's idea of the metaverse is, but um, some sort of sense of a, this a virtual layer on 
on this stack of, um, of different layers that exist in the world. And so to that extent, I sort of see it that it is impossible for something to exist only in the metaverse, only in this digital layer, um, and that it will the concepts move between um, you know let's, the physical world and the and the digital world as I called it um, as as well as objects as well as in the form of data. Um, so I think uh, it's important to look at for me in my work not just the uh, this metaverse layer, but how things travel from. Uh, the, the other layers from the physical world to the metaverse and perhaps, and I think this is just as important, from the uh, digital or metaverse layer back into the physical world. So in, in the work that I presented, when I'm presenting here, it's a lot of it is about uh, the travel of data from the physical world into the virtual world as such. I think it's equally interesting to look at how uh, maybe values or objects created in the physical world can travel back into the virtual, uh, into the physical, excuse me. And one, uh, I mean, I'm not an expert on this one, but one that I find very interesting is, uh, you know, the uh, creation of new realms of value in the uh, virtual world that will perhaps and are currently moving back into the physical world. And just to give a, give a quick example, I mean, the example I was interested earlier is the is the use of architectural visualizations to present a future I mean they're not even trying to sell architecture they're trying to sell an image of a future world um, but there are numerous other examples um, where realms of value are created in the digital world that then filter down if you like to the physical one Uh,个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这个,这
um, and which visions people want to carry forward into the present and into the future um, versus visions of the future that are given by uh, large architectural companies, um, how these compare and how they compete with each other in some sense for, for people's attention and also concretely for, for funding. I hope that answers at least in part your question. Thank you very much. 굉장히 적극적인 예, 참여 너무 감사드리고요. 지금부터 이제 30분간 휴식 후에 4시부터 다시 콜로키움 2부 시작하도록 하겠습니다. <웃음>